So as Redstone computer enthusiasts, I'm sure at some point or another you've had a need for RAM in Minecraft. And although there are plenty of designs out there, the best horizontal RAM that I've found so far are the designs by SwiftDeck16, who made some very, very compact single-read and dual-read RAM. The only problem, of course, is he hasn't exactly released a tutorial video, more like a showcase video, which isn't too terribly difficult to figure out what's going on based on, you know, just the video itself, but obviously not everybody has that skill. So to substitute his uh, lack of videos as of late, I'm going to go ahead and release a tutorial video on how to build his RAM. By the way, if you haven't seen his videos, or the video specifically pertaining to uh, single read and dual read RAM, I would highly recommend checking those out right now, otherwise you won't have any idea what it is I'm talking about. So to get things started with the single read RAM, you're going to go ahead and build yourself a 2x2 two two base with two of the blocks up one block like so. You're then going to go ahead and place a redstone torch on one of the blocks that are raised up, and then redstone dust on top of the rest. You're then going to go ahead and go to the opposite corner of the redstone torch, and you're going to go up one, two, three, four, take out the middle two blocks, and place an upside down sticky piston like so right there. From this block here, you're going to go up one, and then over one, and then place a redstone torch on that block like so, and redstone dust on the other two. You're then going to go in front of the piston, and you're going to place one block followed by a block here and a block here, take out the original block, and place redstone dust on these new blocks. Then a redstone torch on the other side, like so. From this point, you're going to want to go up from the redstone one, two, three, four blocks again, taking out the middle two, placing an upside down sticky piston on top, and then breaking this block here. From there, you're going to want to place a glowstone dust diagonal from this sticky piston, followed by a regular redstone block on the side. Go ahead and place redstone dust along that, and then a regular piston underneath the regular block. From there, you're also going to want to place another block, two blocks above the sticky piston, and then a block above the redstone like so, placing redstone dust along like that. Once you've completed this step, you've basically created one bit of single read RAM, and then to operate it is fairly simple. This line above here is your input, so anything that goes on this line when it is written to RAM will be stored in the register below. So to write it, you simply have to set the state. In this case, we're going to set it to 1, and then you have to activate the write line, which is this line right here, and the value is saved into the register. Now the value on the input can change to whatever you'd like, and it will not affect the value of the register. Now to retrieve the value from the register, you simply activate the read line down below, and the value of the register will be put onto the output bit below here. And of course, if we were to actually write a zero into the bit, if we read this value now, you'll see that a zero comes out. Now to increase the width of our RAM, we can simply take this 2x2 two two column here and stack it sideways as many times as we want, say, seven times. Now, stacking it this way means that all the write lines and all the read lines are all connected, which means activating the line will activate the entire register. So now if we enter a combination of ones and zeros and we activate the write line, that combination is now saved in the register below. And likewise, reading it will then present that combination of ones and zeros to the output bus. You can also add more RAM by simply taking this single slice of RAM and stacking it as many times as you want, say seven times. Now to write to a specific address in RAM or to read a specific address in RAM, you simply have to activate the appropriate write and read lines, and this can be done easily with a decoder. I actually have videos now on how to build one of those, so if you want to check it out, by all means the notification will be in the top right, right there. Now the next tutorial that I want to show you is SwiftX16's design for dual read memory. Now this is incredibly useful if you need to access two pieces of information at the same time, and I personally use this design all the time for general purpose registers for my computers. Uh, of course, because the functionality is a little bit more complex than single read RAM, 
it, building it is also a little bit more complex, but just stick with me, I'll try to make this as clear as possible. So you're going to want to start by placing a line of four blocks like so, then going off to one side, going a block up, and placing two blocks just like that. You're then going to want to place redstone on all four blocks down below here, and the furthest one out on the blocks up like so, and then on the only block that doesn't have anything on, place a torch. You're then going to want to go up one, two, three, four blocks in the corner here, taking out the middle two and placing an upside down sticky piston like so. Then you're going to want to go over one, two blocks from that. Now down below here, right behind the block with the torch on it, you're going to want to place a block up like that and a block over, followed by a block up like so, taking out that block down below, and then just put redstone on that like so. Following the other side of the sticky piston here, you're going to want to place a glowstone, followed by three blocks of your choice. Then go ahead and take redstone and place it on top of all four blocks like so, as well as redstone here and redstone here, being sure to put blocks on top to make sure that they don't connect. Now we need to get these two pieces of redstone powered, so in front of each one you're going to want to go up two blocks like so, taking out the scaffolding blocks, and place a redstone torch on these blocks so that they power the redstone below. And on the one that powers the block above the piston here, you're going to want to place a redstone dust like so. On the other one you're going to want to place another block and another block over like that, placing redstone on top like that. Then in front of this block you're going to want to place an upside down sticky piston like so. And adjacent to the sticky piston you're going to want to place another block with a redstone torch and redstone dust on top like that. Finally you're going to want to place a another block right here followed by another torch and then a block adjacent to that with redstone dust on top of both of those like that. You're also going to want to place blocks on top of both of those redstones like so. Now in front of this redstone you're going to want to go back two blocks and up one taking care of, or taking out both those blocks placing a torch on that block so that it powers that redstone. Then you're going to want to go back one more block and place a glowstone block like so place redstone dust on top of those two blocks right there, and a sticky piston sideways this time on that block like that. You're then going to want to take a block and go up above the redstone, or sorry, the glowstone, and then over three blocks like so, placing redstone dust on top like that. Finally, once you've built that bit, you can go ahead and place an inverter on the top line of redstone here as well as this line of redstone here and this line of redstone here so that they are by default on. And with that said, you now have a single bit of dual read RAM. Now controlling it is fairly similar to the last one over there. To give it some data you have to first input it and keep in mind that it is inverted so if it's on the line overhead is going to be off, then you simply power the right line, which is this one right here, and that data is entered. And once again, it is inverted, so when the piston is retracted, that's a 1. Now to read the data, you actually have two options, because this is dual read. You can either read from the top line here, or from the bottom line there, but either way, it will present to you the value that's stored in the register bit up here. So if we flip this lever, that will deactivate this line allowing the data to be presented along this bit here. And flipping this lever will deactivate this line allowing the bit to be presented on this bit here as well. And of course there's nothing stopping you from actually presenting the data stored in the value on both outputs at the same time. Now once again we can increase the width of our data bus by simply stacking sideways these single bit cells as many times as we'd like. Of course, being sure to invert the inputs once we've got them made. And likewise with the single read RAM, once we have a width set, we can now input a combination of ones and zeros and save it to the register, just like so. And then of course, turning off the line for either the read A or read B presents that value on the appropriate bus. And then once again, if we want to increase the capacity of our dual read RAM, we simply take this slice of dual read RAM and stack it back as many times as we'd like. 
doing this increases the size of the capacity for our RAM, allowing us to store more numbers. Addressing it is the same way as the single read RAM, simply by activating the appropriate read or write line, you can save or recall uh, different numbers based on the information that we give it. And once again, this is easily done with a decoder. In fact, I actually have a decoder specifically designed to work with this particular model for RAM. So if you'd like to check that out, the notification will be in the top right once again. So hopefully some of you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, be sure to leave a like. It's always appreciated. And if you want to be notified of when I upload videos in the future, be sure to subscribe and make sure that bell is ringing. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.